Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel even better. Spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, so today I have the first of three wines from Corvetso. Today's wine is a Prosecco from them. Their website states that they are the number one organic Prosecco winery in Italy. This wine was provided to me for free. I have free reign to say and review the wine in any way I see fit. Okay, enough of that. Let's get some backstory. Nestled in the village of Sassalto, near the town of Treviso, they are between Veneto and the Dolomite Mountains. The winery has been around since 1960, started by the grandparents of the current owner, Giovanni Corvezzo. He likes to refer to himself as the happy farmer. In 2010, a year after taking over the winery, Giovanni began the long process of converting all 380 acres of vineyards to organic. As will happen during this conversion to organics, yields dropped dramatically. While the generation prior to Giovanni had started the process of becoming more sustainable by using integrated pest control and stopping the use of synthetics, Giovanni took the plunge to go full organic. In 2013, that conversion took a hit with a dramatic drop in yield due to the rain and humidity that year a perfect environment for various diseases to affect the vines. While they had stopped synthetics well before then, the vines and grapes had not fully adapted to organic farming. Now that the conversion is complete and there have been a few years of being certified organic, Giovanni says that the skins are thicker, which helps develop better aromas and greater concentration along with better balance. This can also provide better protection, especially in wet or humid years from pests and disease. Now, I didn't see anything about yields returning to pre-2010 levels, but it's not uncommon for overall yield to be lower on average for crops after they've converted to organics, though a farmer's own situation may vary. Another thing to add is that the wines are made from a combination of a state and grower or purchase fruit. This grower fruit must also be certified organic if a wine is going to be organic. Yes, there is an exception, but these wines use 100% certified organic grapes, including grower grapes. In addition to the conversion to organics, Giovanni is considering changing from copper sulfate, aka the Bordeaux mixture, to using chalk in the form of gypsum powder to fight mildew. Now, to me, this is a major thing. Copper sulfate eventually poisons the soil and water. While it's extremely effective against mildew, especially in areas that are subject to humidity like Bordeaux, where it was invented over 100 years ago, its use during this time in much of Europe has increased the copper toxicity in vineyards. It's banned, supposedly, in many EU countries, or at least regulated. And there are reports that wine growers are ignoring those limits on a regular basis in order to save their crops. Also, I and others consider it one of the dirty little secrets of organic farming. So I hope Giovanni makes that change. They also use what is called strip cultivation. This is another name for strip tillage, a form of conservation tillage where a minimal amount of soil is tilled versus full-on tiltage. Tillage, I'm sorry. This method is used for weed control along with what is called green manure. Right. I know that sounds weird, but it's not manure as in poop, but a way to introduce biomass into the soil. A form of cover crop which will also prevent weeds from growing. They are also looking to going, to, going into full biodynamics. They also use solar power and biomass to generate thermal energy. In addition, they use recycled materials and don't use heavy glass. Looking at you, Napa. But that's a different conversation for a different time. In addition to going organic, they use bentonite for fining and no other animal products making them certified vegan. So if that's important to you, it's another reason to check them out. I personally don't have a problem with other fining materials, but each has its advantages and disadvantages. Plus, some of the animal products are considered allergens, uh, depending on the country. The U.S. is not one of them. While the label does not have the USDA organic logo, it does use made with organic designation. 
The literature that accompanied their wine states that Corvetso is considered the equivalent to 100% organic in the EU, but not the US. From all the extensive research I did concerning organics a few months ago, I can only assume it's because Giovanni adds sulfites to the wine. In the US, adding any amount of sulfites this qualifies a wine or any food or beverage for that matter from using the USDA organic logo, even if the total SO2 is less than 10 parts per million. In the EU, they allow anywhere from 100 to 220 parts per million, depending on the color and RS of the wine. For this wine, that maximum would be 220 parts per million. Based upon what my friend Kate from Creative Palette wrote, the supplier of these wines, it sounds like Giovanni is doing everything right in the winery as far as following organic practices in both vineyard and winery. So I imagine he only adds just enough SO2 to ensure the stability of the wine. The back label says as much, quote, this approach allows our wines to be lower in sulfur. With that said, it's not the sulfites, period. All right, look for my definitive ultimate sulfide myth busting videos along with some other hard hitting freestyle videos later this year. Maybe. Okay, so let's see the stats for this wine. The non vintage Corvetto Prosecco suggested retail price is $13. It's the Prosecco DOC, 85% Glera, the major grape in Prosecco, 15% other DOC approved grapes. Now, there are a total of eight grapes that can be used, one of which is Pinot Grigio, which they also plant. They may also be getting any of the other eight from their grower partners. Silvas training system. Now, this is a new one on me. Uh, apparently, it's widely used in Veneto and is a variation of the cordon training. It is named after Carlos Silvas from Pinelliano in Veneto. They do mechanical harvesting. The vinification is soft, cold crushing, and pressing. The second fermentation is over 60 days via the Charmat method or the tank method. Now, the vast majority of Prosecco uses this method. ABV is 11.5%. It is considered extra dry. It has a residual sugar of 12 grams per liter. Now, 12 grams per liter is the breakpoint of brute and extra dry. A winemaker can choose either one. All right, so let's get into the wine. You may have noticed that I think I had it backwards during the whole front part, and then I had something wrong before I, before I did all this, so I, I redid it. All right, I'm going to be lazy and use a little tabby tab because... Well, you're not supposed to when you're like on the floor as a psalm, but I, mean, I use it anyway. So uh, let's talk about tank method real quick versus traditional method and second fermentation. So this wine does not get its second fermentation or does not get its carbonation from, I said I should not have been pointing it at me when I was doing that, um, does not get its carbonation from it being injected. Now, there are some sparkling wines that that's what happens. Uh, in this case, instead of a second fermentation happening in the bottle like champagne or any other wine made in a traditional method or a method champenois or whatever, um, this wine, they, they induce the second fermentation in the tank. Okay? And we're going to pop that on there. As I always say whenever I do sparkling wine, this is the absolute best method to seal a sparkling wine. All right, so assuming the camera above me is actually catching all this, I had a kind of failed review but right for this one and the, uh, the camera above apparently stopped doing stuff, which is very distressing. Anyway, um, it's kind of a medium minus straw color. I mean, obviously we got bubbles in here, so that kind of, you know, kind of change things up a little bit, but um, let's just get into it. So, wow, like major green apple, like, you know, those green apple like candies, you know, like the hard candy type of thing, but it's not like the little ones, it's like the, like the sticks, like the big long stick ones. I can't remember what the brand was on that. Um, but yeah, that was the first thing I got was that kind of green apple candy. I'll just get a little bit of kind of apple blossom. You smell the carbonation too, so that, that's actually a thing, at least on this wine. Not much else. It smells pretty. It's also pretty cold. I literally pulled it out of the fridge 20 minutes ago. So, 
it definitely tastes good. And you can taste that kind of little bit of sweetness. Prosecco tends to be on the sweeter side of sparkling wines. They can make them as dry as your kind of more traditional champagne. Again, remember champagne can go up to 12 grams per liter too on a brute. Um, but they tend to push that 12 grams per liter on, on Prosecco more than say champagne will. But again, you get that green apple more than anything else. It's really tasty. It's like a touch of sweetness. Like, don't, don't mistake this. It's not Moscato Dosti or anything like that. But, yeah, it's, um, it's super tasty. But, yeah, it's, it's green apple. It's crisp. It's tar a little tartness. It's really crisp and refreshing. Um, the bubbles are really good. It's got a good mouthfeel. Now, I don't get into this very much. At least I don't think I do when I talk about sparkling wines in general. But... Each type of sparkling wine has like a different kind of bubbles, like as far as like the mouthfeel of the bubbles and the, it's kind of like how small and how big the bubbles are. Prosecco tends to be a little bit bigger because it's the tank method. Champagne tends to have smaller bubbles or any wine produced in that method. And if it's just injected in, uh, carbonation is just injected, it will have larger bubbles. I don't know the science of that, but that's kind of the, the tendency, I'm sure you might find some Proseccos that are, have smaller bubbles or whatever, but I mean, you may have some larger bubbles here and there. And then, but anyway, but that's one thing to kind of note there's the differences between the different types of sparkling wine. There is a bit of, um, um, orange in there, tangerine, nectarine. So uh, some other, some like citrus fruit, some tree fruit. It tastes really good. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking for a different Prosecco than La Marca, pretty much. Um, I like it better than La Marca. Now, I haven't had La Marca in like a few, quite a few months, but I like it better than La Marca. So if you can find this, I say give it a shot. Absolutely. All right. I think that's going to do it for the episode. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, it's going to do it for today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe and then tell your friends. And we'll see you next time.